Welcome to the shortwave radio channel, and uh, this is an indication here. We could see a little bit of info on, uh, first of all, the way shortwave works. Um, we have these layers in the ionosphere during daytime, nighttime, and that actually affects the frequencies that we're going to use and listen to, depending on the day and night pattern. Uh, unfortunately, a, a lot of newbies uh, don't understand this process, and so they try frequencies in the daytime that are impossible, or frequencies at the nighttime that are impossible. Plus, add the fact that depending on solar activity and the season of the year, there's kind of a mix where both uh, propagation, daytime, nighttime, kind of uh, interact with each other to some part of nighttime and daytime. And you, you understand how it can get really complicated. So one of the things that uh, also is um, we don't talk about much is the difference between summer and winter propagation. One of the comments that was on the channel is why is it that in the summertime, I noticed that 10 meters is relatively quiet, but in the wintertime, 10 meters is really wide open. And it has to do with uh, different types of phenomena. There are some that are still not fully understood by um, you know, study with satellites and some that are. Um, remember that if the, the more you are in a northern latitude or a southern latitude closer to the poles, the more that effect is uh, big. What happens is that 10 meters is going to reflect signals at the, uh, the highest point of the ionosphere and the F2 layer often. So that's really to the edge of where signals bounce before they get lost to space. And there is a cutoff point. Depending on solar activity, that cutoff point could be very high. It could be up to 50, 60 megahertz. But it could also be, when solar activity is lower, uh, barely above 30 megahertz. What happens in the summer is that the sun is much higher in the sky. We notice it. And that makes our days longer. But also that higher solar radiation tends to expand the different layers of the ionosphere uh, a lot more. So that same F2 layer that bounced those signals really well in the winter now has expanded so much that the electrons that are in there are spaced out a lot more, which also makes it less efficient. So what's going to happen is that you'll notice that the signals that you usually hear in winter might not be able to propagate or bounce off the ionosphere in the summer. So that's why we lose some types of propagation. If you go on 10 meters in the summer at noon, local noon, you uh, might not hear the signals that you hear from all around the world. Or, you know, for example, here in Montreal, um, at noon on in January or December, I'll be hearing tons of 10 meter signals coming out of Europe. But at noon, on this time now, right now, almost June, uh, there's almost nothing. And what I hear will be mostly a few signals from maybe Central South America or the South of the United States will be more localized to the sort north south of where we are. And it all has to do with how that layer of propagation has changed. And of course, as time goes by, you'll see that in late July and August, slowly the 10 meter band will gain back what we lost. It is really a cycle that goes through year after year after year. And that's why wintertime is often better on 10 meters than the summertime. Uh, these are some of the conditions. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.